I'll be going through the answers quickly, so make sure your course book is open and in front of you, and please stop and rewind the video as you need to. So, got your book open in front of you? Are your answers in capitals? Want to know why the answers are the answers? Then let's go. For question number nine, this is straightforward, perfect forms. If we have a look at the sentence, we can, see, we can clearly see that two time periods are being connected together, knowing what, you, uh, knowing what you want achieve in 10 years time. In other words, it's connecting now until uh, or to 10 years in the future. So if it's a perfect form, we need a form of the verb have somewhere, and that's exactly what we need in this gap, to have achieved. For question number 10, what we have to put in here is a form of emphasis to stress the conditional subclause which follows. Which emphatic word can we use in this gap? Even. Even if it doesn't seem a realistic goal for today. Now for number 11, I'm sure you've seen that this is another subclause or subordinate clause main clause sentence. And given the context with which you're presented, you're probably thinking, aha, okay, it's a conditional, I can use if. That works up until you get to the end of the sentence, because if you do that, then you see there's a negative element being introduced, some kind of negative context. And therefore, if cannot work. But we need an alternative to if, which we can use in negative uh, context, and that is unless, which is why unless is the answer in this case and not if. For question 13, it's a simple future continuous forms. You will, gap, and then we've got the present participle of spend, spending. This is a continuous form. What do we need with continuous forms? We need a form of the verb B, and that's uh, and the correct form that we need here is B. You'll be spending the rest of your dot dot dot. So question fourteen, simple preposition issue. You aim for something, and therefore the answer is for. Question 15, I'm sure you get this right. This is an expression that you should be using in all of your speaking exercises to express a contrast. And the full expression is on one hand and on the other hand. And that's exactly why the answer to question 14, uh, 15 is other. For question 16, what we need here is a substitutive term to replace the term that we've just mentioned. In other words, talent. There are certain skills you can learn, but real talent is talent that people are born with and it's possible to learn this. But we can't say talent is talent because, well, stylistically it's not fantastic and for the purposes of this exercise it's not a word that we would include. But we can use the substitutive form and that substitutive form is something. Talent is something that people are born with. 